Today we're talking about laminators and I'm going to show you some cool tips and tricks. Hi there, my name is Ed Choi. Thank you for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. In my channel, I talk about everything to do with the office and today we are talking about the Mighty Laminator. Sometimes I feel like the laminator is the unsung hero in the office, but here's 10 tips and tricks on how to make this into a superhero. Tip number one, laminating sheets might not be abundant in your office setting, or if you're a teacher, sometimes you're on a limited budget and you've got to make do with what you've got. So here's one way to stretch your laminating pouches. So what you can do is actually put your documents back to back, laminate it using one sheet and trim off the edges once you're done. So once you've trimmed off the edges, what you're going to do is you're going to separate the two pages. And once you've done that, you're going to have two laminated documents. So it's a pretty cool idea to make your laminating pouches go further. Now, of course, the front side, it is going to be laminated on the back side. It's going to be regular paper, but that's not usually a big deal, especially if you want to just preserve what's on the front. And it's actually pretty cool because you can write regular with regular pen or marker on the back side if you need to make any notes. So tip number two, it's another money saving tip. As you guys all know, I love my post-it notes. I use post-it notes for everything and especially a lot of brainstorming, but they're not really cheap. And sometimes you want to reuse post-it notes. Well, here's a way to do it. What I like to do is when I'm making laminated sticky notes, I'm going to use a colored cardboard and just laminate that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, use a cutting tool and use a post-it note as a template to cut off the perfect size post-it note. And for this project, you'll also need some double-sided tape and a pair of scissors. So what we'll do is we're going to take the double-sided tape. We're going to tape it alongside the top of a regular post-it note. That's right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to cut along the top of the post-it note. And at the end, what we're going to get is a laminated sheet, a laminated post-it note that looks like this. On the back side, it's a post-it adhesive, so it's going to stick really, really well. And from here, I can just take my marker whoop, and use it as a reusable post-it note. So how cool is that? Tip number three. So as you can see, you can use dry erase markers on your laminated sticky notes. Well, with that, if you want a larger surface, what you can do is you can get a large or full size eight and a half by 11 sheet you can put that into a laminating machine and use just that as a portable whiteboard. So it could be your personal whiteboard. It's going to perform pretty good. Of course, there are other products out there that are dry erase surfaces that are sheet size, but I find this is just a really quick and easy way to make your own little whiteboard. Tip number four. Now, most businesses will probably have some sort of signage with that throughout their facilities, whether it be your hand washing sign or other signs like that. Rather than trying to monkey around and make your own sign that doesn't look sometimes all too professional, Fellows has an amazing website that has tons of awesome templates that you can print out and use for free, which I love. Look at this, this weekly planner. This is what I uh, plan on using fairly soon. And of course, for my kids, I'm gonna have this weekly chore chart. This is all from the Fellows website. I'm gonna leave the link down below, but a great resource to get high quality templates that you can t print off and of course laminate. Tip number five, you often mention hot lamination and cold lamination. What is the difference? Why do we have two settings? Well, for the most part, all your laminate is going to be hot laminating, but when you want to use the cold laminating is when you're dealing with sensitive documents. So when you're talking about thermal paper, ultrasound photographs, all those are really heat sensitive. Uh, of course, you all know that I love my friction erasable markers and pens and we all know that that actually uses heat to erase it so of course if you take uh, a friction pen and you put it, that through the laminator on a laminated sheet it's going to disappear which is a cool magic trick but sometimes you don't want that so anytime when there's a sensitive document or anything that's really sensitive to heat or anything that's very delicate you want to use a cold laminate setting for everything else use a hot laminating setting tip number six on the topic of sensitive documents, sometimes you have documents that are UV sensitive. So for example, pictures might be UV sensitive or other sensitive documents. So for that, you wanna use UV protected lamination paper. Now Fellows has their image last lamination sheets. This is what I use on my photos over here. 
And of course you have different sizes that you can use. So these UV laminated sheets, will, it's gonna preserve the integrity of the document or the picture. So really good idea. If you're gonna be laminating something sensitive, make sure you use UV protected sheets. So another tip, sometimes you wanna, again, maximize your, your laminated sheets or you don't have the luxury of having the proper size laminating pouch for your job and you have to laminate a couple different documents onto a sheet. Well, it's a bit of a nuisance sometimes uh, dealing with loose items and laminating pouch because it might fall off when you pick it up and you try to put it in and it, it comes out all crooked, so it's not really fun. But what you can do in that instance is take a glue stick, dab just a little bit of glue on the backside of your uh, document that you want to laminate, put it in the pouch, and laminate it away. I don't believe this is a sanctioned method from fellows, but it is pretty handy to do in a pinch to keep everything aligned on your document. Another thing that you might notice when you're shopping around for laminating pouches is different sizes. You'll see three millimeters, five, seven, and 10. What does that all mean? Essentially, it's the thickness of the lamination, laminated pouch. So really depending on your application, most applications you're dealing with three mil. So this is a three mil sheet, it's a little bit bendy. But again, you can see this is a public sign. So for a public sign, you might want something that's a little bit heavier duty. You might want to move up to the five millimeter. So if the document is going to be handled a lot, that's another reason to move up from the three mil to the five mil. And moving up to the seven to 10 mil, that's pretty heavy duty. Where I would use that is probably an outdoor signage. Again, you've got a sign that you want to put place outdoors, or uh, again, another document that you want is going to be handled quite a bit. Or going back to the idea of the whiteboard, if you want to do a lot of whiteboarding, the using a 10, using a seven or 10 mil might be a good idea because it's gonna be a little bit more rigid. So again, choosing the right thickness is gonna be really important, but just as important as choosing the right thickness is also choosing the right size pouch. Fellows has a variety of pouches. So this is an eight half by 11. We also have this Mondo menu size pouch which is great, again, if you're gonna be laminating larger documents. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a link down below to all the different sizes that Fellows has in laminating sheets. And of course, you can use other laminating sheets in this, uh, in the Fellows laminator. Uh, they're all usually interchangeable, so do your research and figure out what size pouch you need for your laminator. So tip number nine, something that's super important and something that you guys should be doing on a regular basis around the office is of course cleaning. Cleaning is a very important aspect in terms of maintaining your technology equipment. So this laminator is no exception. For this, there's a few more intricacies to cleaning. So I like to clean the outside, of course, using eye cloth. Um, eye cloth's my wonderful sponsor and so they does a fantastic job just to clean the, the outside. But what about the interior? That's probably something you've never thought of, but there's actually laminating cleaning sheets that you can get from Fellows. And essentially what it is, it's just a, it's a thicker stock paper. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna take that thicker stock paper and feed it through to your laminator. What it's gonna do, it's gonna clean out all the gunky residue that's left behind, so the adhesive. And it's a good idea to do it every 20th laminating sheet that you put through there. It's really good to maintain your technology equipment. And this is one of the things that I'm sure a lot of people didn't know about that they had to clean their laminators. And finally, tip number 10, choose the right laminator. <laughs> There's tons of laminators out there and you gotta make sure you choose the right laminator. You, so some of the questions you wanna ask yourself is, is it a high use environment? Are you gonna be using it once in a while? Is it for your home? or is it for your office? Are there gonna be a lot of different people using the laminator? So these are all some of the questions and what are the different sizes? As you can see here, this is the Fellows Jupiter 2. Fellows was kind enough to send me a sample of this to test out and I've gotta say it's amazing. So what makes this model very appealing is that it has a very quick warm up time. So if you can imagine if it's a, in a high use environment, you wanna make sure the laminator warms up to the right temperature. If you don't wait for it to come up to the right temperature, then what's gonna happen is it's just the lamination it's not gonna laminate properly and it's gonna it's not gonna perform well. So it's important to have a quick heat up period. This has actually a heat up period of 60 seconds. I kind of think that it actually heated up a little bit quicker when I first uh, tried this out, so I was super impressed with it. The other thing too is that it's auto sensing. And that's really important because a lot of laminators will have a setting for three, five, and seven or ten mil thickness. And some of the oftentimes the users just don't know what thickness their laminate sheet is. They'll pick up a, a laminating pouch and they'll kind of take a guess. That's not so good because it's not gonna perform well. With a Jupiter 2, it's auto sensing. So you just feed in the laminating sheet. It'll sense the thickness. It'll do its job. So you don't really have, there's no settings. Really, there's just an on button. There's a reverse button and that's it. 
Now the reverse button is pretty cool because it's an anti-jam feature. So if for some reason something goes in crooked, um, it will actually stop and it will reverse back out. Again, great to use in a setting where there's a lot of different users and people just want something very simple and straightforward, but really functional. So you can see it's also very wide and it accepts different sizes up to that mini size in here, um, up to the small photo and the car pouches. So that's really important to have that variety. Again, that quick warm up speed, um, I really appreciated that. And it's very clean looking. So this is something that's very important. Now there are other lanyards for personal that might not have all the bells and whistles. It might have a longer warm up period. It may only take an eight and a half by 11. So these are some of the things that you wanna look out for. Now what I'm gonna do is again, I'll leave a link down below in terms of all the different laminators that Fellows has. And based on what your application is, you can just go through the lanyards and click on what lanyard is right for you. So there you have it, 10 tips and tricks on how to use your laminator and different things you could do with the laminating pouches. I hope you learned something new. Do me a favor, if you like this video and you found this useful, useful, please forward this to your friends, family, and coworkers. And of course, if you haven't done so by now, what are you waiting for? Click on that subscribe button and tap on that bell to be notified of my video uploads. Thanks so much for joining me. I had lots of fun playing around with this Lambda. Thanks again for fellows for giving me this Lambda to test out. It was awesome. And again, thanks for my sponsor iCloth for always being there for me. All right, thanks a lot and we'll see you guys next time.